Okay, Jwar Jwar Sphinx, so this is already an insane bomb. Don't even have to think about that. Let's take a look at who is in the draft with us. Looks like Juan is there, <laughs> it's Lover is there, Turn 2 Stormcrow is there, uh, the person I messaged on Discord is there. So uh, half, the, <laughs> half the pod here is um, representing the cube and Chaos server, you'll have to see it. And then um, Biz1 is there as well, that person I messaged. So uh, let's quickly take note of what we're passing here. Passing March Casualties as probably the next most powerful card in the pack. It is quite uh, a strong one. Adventuring Gear is fine. Blade Tusk Boar is reasonable. Skyfisher is good. But yeah, I mean, this thing is just cracked in half. So we'll take that. All right. So question now is like to what extent am I going to be forcing blue uh, now that I do have a blue bomb um, also note by the way that we opened a Zendikar pack which very likely means that it's not going to be chromatic chaos so it looks like they got it right maybe that's what the extra time was for okay wow and now we get a sanctum custodian which is a very powerful card um, this is a relatively solid pack seasoned marshal not a bad aggressive card Phyrexian Ghoul, obviously a card we've seen many times over. There's even a Corrupt in the pack, which I didn't notice. It's hard to remember all the arts. Symbiosis, um, perfectly reasonable combat trick. But yeah, we're going to be happy here to take a Sanctum Custodian. <laughs> Just a very powerful healer, not to mention that um, it's going to slow the game down, make it easier for us to reach the um, Sphinx of Dwar Isle here on time. So I'm very excited about that. They work nicely together. Black should be a little bit contested after that pack. Well, actually, black should just likely not be super open um, pack two because we, one, passed a Marsh Casualties, and this time we passed the um, Phyrexian Ghoul. Okay, what do we have in this one? This pack is quite poor, actually, for a War of the Spark pack, which is not a common thing to say. And yet here we are. So we're looking at, like, Tyrant Scorn, which is a decent interactive card, but it is multiple colors. Bond of Insight, which is a fine card, but it is kind of a build around. I'm looking at Arlen's Wolf as just like a reasonably statted card with a nice evasive ability. Uh, I don't want to force any colors or anything like that. I don't want to put Prismite in my deck if I don't have to. Um, yeah, this is just, this has to be one of the worst War of the Spark packs I've ever seen. Um, I could take Tyrant Scorn here, but. Let's just take a wolf, try to stay a little bit more open. Um, because, you know, it's not even like we're locked into blue, so. All right, I'm so excited. We're finally here, we're finally doing it. At some point I'm gonna need food, but we can worry about that later. <laughs> um, okay, so search for a zombie card and a swamp card. Uh, corpse Harvester, huh? So that is an interesting one. Um, Ward Sliver is going to be much more powerful than it seems to be. Crypt Sliver is not bad. Um, I do think I'm going to be taking the Ward Sliver, just 5 mana for a 2-2. Two, two that It's like sort of a voice of all, but it's much worse. Obviously, um, it's an extra mana, doesn't have flying, and it does grant the ability to all slivers. And I don't know, I feel like in this format, um, the symmetry is more likely to hurt you than help you. Um, that said, you know, still a reasonable card. Uh, the 6 mana 3 6 reach is fine. 1 1 regenerate is fine. Hill Giant's fine. Not a believer in the Corpse Harvester, so let's just take this protection card. See if we can try to play white now that we have a second white card here. Hey, good to see you, Mercurial Blue. Yes, Bant Things. You love to see it. I'm going to have to read a bunch of the cards in this one because I don't know what they do. Um, shoot, that's actually not a good place to be. Hanger Scrounger, I think, is reasonable. Mill cards. Okay, we don't have any spells though. Ooh, wait, there's just a streetwise negotiator in the pack. There's just a watch wolf. Okay, well, I don't really see why I wouldn't take that. This card cares about transformed stuff. Hey, great to see you, Amaz. Yeah, chaos indeed. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to be taking the hill giant. Seems like the insane sphinx that we took first is not going to happen today. Um, but that's all right. Oh, thank you so much for gifting a sub, Mercurio. Really appreciate it. Um, that's awesome. Thank you. 
Uh, okay, so what are we taking out of this one? This pack is looking like pretty poor. I guess I could take like Pigment Storm as like a reasonable removal. I have no interactive cards at this point. Um, I could take Needlethorn Drake if I thought I could end up blue-green specifically. Maybe there's a chance of that. I just don't feel like blue has been open. Don't really want to take a gold card if I can't uh, play it. I think Crushing Disappointment is totally fine. <laughs> um, yeah, let's take... Let's take the Pigment Storm here, just try to stay like as open as possible, pick up our first removal spell, just try to see what's up here. Okay, interesting. I think I'm now really incentivized to take this Shield Mate. It does keep me open between green and white. Um, those colors you know, seem to be uh, at least considerations for what I'm doing. I do like Crawl Swarm a lot though. I think this card is a totally reasonable flyer. Um, I think this card gets underrated a lot too, but I think this makes sense, like especially given that I'm in this place between kind of green and white um, and like Crawl Swarm, like I have zero black cards. So I don't know, it's kind of weird to consider taking that. I don't love the Shield Mate, but it is just a cheap spell. Okay, interesting. Now there's a Serum Raker. <laughs> um, Priest of Norn is good too, but I mean, is it too late to try to backdoor into blue after seeing, like, no blue the entire pack? Probably not. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think it's fine to take the Serum Raker. I don't think red is very likely to happen. The only thing I'm passing is the Priest of Norn. And this card is, like, pretty solid. Like, effectively 1-4 Vigilance Wither. It's not very good at dealing damage to players, but we'll just see what happens here with the blue. Okay, we've got a Hill Giant here in the Cell Sword, but we also have no black cards. Ooh, actually I think Gomazoa is going to be pretty solid. This card's a really nice uh, defensive play, uh, good blocker, that kind of thing. Um, and once again, if we're trying to hit six mana, it seems like a good place to be. So I think I'm pretty happy about that. It's giving me a little bit more direction here. I was like totally off this Sphinx for like that first half of pack one, and now it's like, well, maybe not. Okay, interesting. So now we have a Corrupt in the pack, which is here quite late. And that said, we have zero black cards, and I do think Seasoned Marshall. I don't know if this card is good in this deck. Like if I'm trying to be defensive, then like, I mean, this is a reasonable aggressive card, but I just think there's like a close to 0% chance that I play Corrupt. So I will take this thing. If I end up in the green-white deck specifically, then it could be good. Otherwise, um, I mean, what's going on in this pack? There's just not a whole lot. I could just take Shadow Fugue as a fine card. There's Bond of Insight, which is powerful, but I'm just nowhere close to making that work. Um, so yeah, I think it's... Well, I mean, I could take Wall of Runes for signaling. I don't know. This is a bad pack. Sure. Okay. <laughs> get the elsewhere flask that sounds very nice yeah uh vile deacon i don't think that one's happening this invoker is not the absolute worst but it's not exactly a good card okay halo hopper what does this one do uh this is like fine ish i don't think we're interested in a halo hopper oh Lamas, thank you for the follow i appreciate it um and i don't know i guess we can take this masterpiece uh yeah, whatever. <laughs> All right. So we didn't see very much good blue, but we saw a few cards in blue that were playable. Wow, Debtor's Knell. Okay, isn't this card just insane? Um, Debtor's Knell, we are passing a Basilica. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That said, you know, every time there's like that kind of sentiment, which in general I would agree with, it's like, well, what if I just you know, pick up this seven mana card that like nobody can ever beat, right? <laughs> um, it's not exactly how it works, but it's a pretty powerful effect. Yeah. Okay, well, say goodbye to the green. Ooh, Illyrios. That's a nice one now. Um, not really a reason to pick up anything else. Uh, not too many cards in the pack are good or even playable. I mean, Acolyte is quite strong. I like the Oracle a good amount. Uh, but Illyrios is just exactly what the doctor ordered here, so I'm very happy about that. Let's send these gruel cards away. I don't think this stuff is happening. OK, 
Okay, and now do we just take a Selesnya Sanctuary? Oh, there's a Faith's Fetters though. I guess I have to take Faith's Fetters. I have like no interaction. I don't think I'm splashing green for, yeah, for either of the green cards. Wow, this is a good pack though, because Faith's Fetters and Selesnya Sanctuary are the like cards on the table for me, but the Evangel is like very strong and even the Grudian can do work sometimes. Um, so yeah, I'll take my, my Faith's Fetters, but not sure about um, everything that's being passed around at this point. Pack two seems like it's going a lot more smoothly than uh, than pack one so far. Okay, interesting. Now we have Gather the Townsfolk, Loyal Cathar, a couple um, four mana blue cards that can be played at instant speed too. Um, not sure about whether the seasoned marshal will make the cut. Um, Okay, so I think at this point, I just want to take Gather the Townsfolk, given that it is uh, a cheap card um, and it's easy to cast. I don't want to put Loyal Cathar into my two drop slot and be like, oh yes, here's my two drop that I can't play on like turn two or like sometimes even turn three or whatever. Um, and I just want to make sure I survive. Like I'd be very happy with any of the blue or white cards other than Artful Dodge from this pack, but let's just take this one, try to get my curve to work here. Okay, interesting. Now we have more interaction in Run Aground. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Shining Aerosaur is reasonable, um, and Legion's Judgment is not always a card you want to main deck, but it can work. I think I'm in for a Run Aground, though. Um, and then, yeah, more likely than not, this is going to hang out in the sideboard. And this is already looking, like, pretty reasonable to me. Um... Yeah, this pack has just been going much more smoothly than pack one, which is a great feeling. Nice defensive deck so far. We've got Ward Sliver as a, ooh, nice. Now we have Apex Hawks, love this card. Even the, cal uh, the Calcite Snapper can be pretty obnoxious. Treasure Hunt is not the worst. Sometimes this card can do work. Maybe one of the blue cards wheels here. Not very likely though, because we do have some real stinkers in the pack too, uh, but I'm happy enough with an Apex Hawks, can't really complain. We should have some good wheels coming our way this pack, I just feel like the pack has been a little bit too good for us not to get anything um, we're interested in when the cards come around. I don't know how often we're actually casting this. I can't believe I passed two bounce lands, it's like so against everything that, uh, <laughs> that I love in Magic, but here we are. And I, I have a feeling this pod, I think people are going to know what they're doing a little bit too much to, um, hey Wacky, good to see you, um, to let the bounce uh, lands come around. Okay, so interesting, now we have Deranged Assistant, which in theory is a card that would help us cast like our 6 and 7 mana cards. That said, I think I'm just in for a Blazing Torch. I don't have a lot of respect for this thing, it doesn't really attack or block, I don't have any... I guess technically I have graveyard synergies with debtors now, but like, come on, like deranged assistant, I think I can do a little bit better than that, I hope at least. Maybe this is wrong, maybe I'm just supposed to take this guy. Um, I don't know, it's actually really interesting. I think it's defensible to take this, because I do have a number of like four mana cards too, but I just want to load up on interaction while I have the chance, I think. Ooh, I love the Knight Arbiter. Okay, that's a great five drop for this deck. Perfect. Uh, not really passing anything that I care about here. That's true, yeah. But I feel like um, the idea with the Assistant there was to have a bunch of Graveyard Synergies, like stuff that you're actively trying to mill. I don't know. Yeah. It's also nice that um, I have that Blazing Torch. I already have, what, two creatures with Vigilance, so I can send my creatures in, deal some damage, and then uh, maybe on my opponent's turn, sack the Torch. I can also just um, use the Torch to help the creatures trade up in combat, or I guess the Shield Mate, because the Arbiter's not going to be blocked. Mm, okay, Agent of Masks. <sighs> some really powerful Is it cards here. Could just take Vacuum Melt. Um... I don't know how likely Vacuum Melt is to make my deck. If that card were an instant, it would be a lot better. Um, 
and I could just like hate trap to steam core weird or something. I think I'm still gonna take this though. I think there's a chance that I could end up wanting this. Like maybe uh, what I picked up that elemental masterpiece. I could imagine my opponents having maybe some scary um, tokens or something like that that I could want to interact with. Um, okay, chain to memory. Do I have any interest in this? Um, I think I'd rather play Starlit Mantle, but like, yeah, I don't know. I think this card's okay. I don't love either of these though. This one can hang out over here, I think. Okay. Yeah. Smash, I don't think is going to do a whole lot. So I can either take a Moss Dog or a Gather Courage. I'll take a Moss Dog. I think this card can be better than it looks. Oh, wow, we got the Sea Kite back. He loved to see it. This is the exact kind of wheel I was hoping for. It's going to fill out my curve, give me options when I'm holding up Run Aground, potentially eat some attackers that are coming in there. You love to see it. Um, sure, I don't know. These cards are unplayable. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'll take this. All right, so off to a very solid start here for blue-white, up to 16 playables, which is almost exactly where you want to be after pack two. Now we're looking at maybe an Ojitai's Summons. Dromoka Dunecaster is not the worst. Hedonist Trove is kind of an interesting one. I think I'm in for the Summons. It's just a pretty powerful effect, even though it is a little more expensive. <laughs> and as I pick up like the Sea Kite and now this thing, I'm going to be like, hmm, maybe I shouldn't have like talked so much crap about that uh, um, deranged assistant, huh? Anyway, uh, yeah, let's take the summons here. Okay, aerial guide is totally solid. Um, otherwise, there's really nothing going on in this pack. I mean, the paramount would be a playable for us, similarly to the shield mate. Like, at some point, you just need cheap cards for curve. Uh, but I don't think we're at the point where we're taking this thing over aerial guide. Um... Yeah, I don't think we need to do that. Ambuscade going around, card's totally fine. I used to think Ambuscade was really good, like when this card was like spoiled or whatever, I was like, oh my gosh, Ambuscade. And then they printed Clear Shot. Or wait, no, no, no. Did that, that happened in the opposite order, didn't it? Yeah, then it was like, oh, Clear Shot exists. <laughs> oh yeah, Clear Shot, that card that's like totally messed up and like one of the best um, green removal spells for limited. All right, Jalen Sphinx. This card's okay. There's a Snare Squad too. Um, in some decks, this would be a nice kind of aggressive. I don't know if I would say bombs, but yeah. But Mercurio, it was downshifted in like Double Masters or something. But yeah, <laughs> no. Um, I think I'm taking Snare Squad here. There's a chance I would wheel this thing. Um, but really, like, this is just another cheap play. I don't know, maybe I should just take the Sphinx, given that I do think it's a stronger card, at least for this deck. Um, but I have so many expensive cards, I just want to make my curve work. There's actually an argument for the Clue Stone, and I hate Clue Stones. <laughs> uh, if this were a Signet, I would take that. Maybe even take the uh, Deranged Assistant, but uh, don't, don't tell anyone about that, chat. Okay, a new prop guild mage, wow. Okay, this seems very nice. I don't think I can afford to try to wheel that. It's a two drop, but it also has some powerful abilities in the late game. Seller of Songbirds would probably be better than the Snare Squad, but that's okay. Yeah, this deck seems like pretty solid. Um, I'm excited to try to play with Debtors now. I mean, Sphinx of Dwar Isle is just an unreasonable magic card, so that's gonna be fun too. Um, this could be a deck that wants 18 lands, by the way. Ooh, Thriving Ibex. <laughs> One of the cards that I liked in Kaladesh and nobody else did. I don't think we're getting there with Padim. We have one artifact. And the Wingsmith, while it's fine, it's like nothing great. Um, notably, good cards in this pack that are still here. I think High Spire Artisan is totally solid, and Wayward Giant is pretty good sometimes. But we might just want like one more spell here. We might just take this deck, add one spell, and then run 18 lands. Try to make sure I can cast my spells and that kind of thing. I don't think I have a lot in the way of card advantage. <clears throat> I 
which makes 18 lands slightly more dubious, but in general, I think that I'm pretty happy to be in this spot. Oh, McKinney Aeronaut, this is just about perfect. So this is a two drop, it blocks well, but also can get in for some points of damage here and there. Sometimes Bone Saw is gonna work, but yeah, this is just about exactly what we were looking for here. And we'll see if we play another spell from this pack. It's gonna have to be a good one. Um, I don't think I have any cards in my deck at the moment that feel like bad or even particularly clunky. Don't get me wrong, there's still some stuff I would change about my deck if I could. Once again, curves a little high. Um, that said, overall I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, we've got some very powerful cards. Oh, <laughs> there's Okami no Shoes Negate. Do I have to main deck it as tribute to Okami no Shu, member of the Discord who unfortunately is not able to um, play much Chaos? I'll definitely take it. I mean, the Poplar is a very powerful card. I don't know why this is still here. Fester Creep is like playable. Stream of Unconsciousness, this was like almost functionally reprinted in Link's Zendikar Rising or something. I don't know about a main deck negate, but we'll at least pick it up. Oh wow, and a Tranquil Cove, that's just about perfect. Water Whirl, interestingly, is like Vacuum Melt for two, but at instant speed. So that's appealing as well, but super down for a Tranquil Cove here. And I think currently we're looking at either this deck um, plus another 16 lands, or this deck minus Negate um, plus 17 lands. But either way, pretty happy with how things have gone here. Could end up cutting like the Snare Squad, honestly. It's not a very good card for this deck. It's just kind of a three mana one four. But yeah, pack one, we were pretty all over the place and then um, pack two really cleared things up for us. I could take Anticipate, but part of me actually wants to take Deadly Wanderings. I think this card is very hard to beat and I can't really interact with it. The problem is Anticipate is a decent card and like I would main deck this. So maybe if this card's wheeling, maybe nobody values this enough to play it. I have a feeling I'm going to like lose to this thing if I don't hate draft it, but I think I'll take the Anticipate. Really low confidence on that one. Okay, this time we can take the Desert. Uh, this land is not very good fixing, so I don't really care. Um, two drop could be important for someone, but I know that um, kind of regardless of whether this thing would make the cut for somebody else, the Desert um, would matter. Um, you know, assuming there are at least two red drafters downstream, so. Okay, and interesting, so we don't wield the Jalen Sphinx, maybe not a huge surprise. We can pick up a Clue Stone, but I don't actually think I'm playing Clue Stone in this deck. Look how many three drops I have. So I think I'm gonna take Morgue Burst, um, which this is just a powerful two for one. I don't want someone to have access to this. And we are almost guaranteed to play against someone from our pod. I don't think I'm playing against, or I don't think I'm running Mizium skin here, uh, especially if I'm not even playing like Starlet Mantle. So just take a um, a ringleader out of the, the equation here. I don't want to play Coral Merfolk or whatever this guy is, but you know, maybe. And then sure. Oh, and we actually got the stream back. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Um, I do have Faith's better specifically, which would be pretty backbreaking against that one. So that's good to keep in mind. Okay, but overall, I'm happy with how this draft went. Um, not sure how many picks I would do differently with Hindsight, which is usually a good place to be. Um, let's take the Tranquil Cove out of the deck for now. And I think now that we have Anticipate in here, we don't have to play 18 lands. I think 17 lands plus Anticipate makes a lot of sense to me. And we could just end up cutting the Snare Squad. It's just a random 1-4 blocker. Basically, at that point, we'd be choosing to play the Negate over the Snare Squad. So I'm not sure that that's going to be correct. Let's take both of these cards out because they are the ones on the chopping block for me. This is effectively a creature. This is effectively a creature. Okay, so yeah, I just don't know if a 1-4 actually cuts it. It might be really good, but let's try this instead. I'm not sure what the mana is gonna look like, look like here. Um, it's interesting because like 
we have what one two three instances of double blue but we also have this instance of triple white um, i know magic online is going to try to give me at least one swamp and one forest which is just classic <clears throat> I think it's very possible that I could just want to run 8 and 8, plus the Tranquil Cove. I don't really see a reason not to do that. What would you cut for Starlet Mantle? It could be, like, it could easily be good enough. I kind of feel like Negate does the same thing and sometimes more, but I guess this can be a proactive card, like this can be a combat trick. Ward Sliver, yeah, that's reasonable. This is an expensive one. The Knight Arbiter might just block better. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It's really close. I, I think I'll give it a try, but I might end up switching it back at some point. But I remember, um, I think it was wacky, yeah, mentioned that uh, the mantle's really good, so we'll just try this out, see how it goes. Yep, there are the swamps in the forest. <laughs> Classic Magic Online. The funny thing now is like, I wonder how many people who are in the draft are just going to be like watching the stream and waiting for me to get paired. Okay, no, we actually did get paired from uh, with someone from the server. This person very narrowly beat me last time we played, so this will be a chance for me to get revenge. Yeah, 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 I know what you mean, Mercurio. I don't know if any of them are remotely playable, but there are also some like permanents and stuff that um <clears throat> that can let your creatures do that, I think. Yeah, so this person um lost the finals of the last chaos draft. Uh they had a darker Valkyrie in their deck. They had um this will be a keep. Oh, they have Luris Companion. Very exciting. Uh, lead on planes. That's awesome. <laughs> Where's Jakob? Okay, they're just black white potentially. We'll see what's going on here. There's the custodian. We are pretty weak to Luris. I think we can draw like Blazing Torch to kill it, but I don't actually know if. They have almost anything else that can deal with Luris. Never happened. Okay. So they might just take the Custodian here. If they do that, that's fine. Actually, the worst part about this is now they know about the Sea Kite. Um, what did we lose there? Oh, the Sea Kite. Well, that's interesting because that's the one that the opponent knew about anyway. So now we just get to do this. I don't know if the Sanctum Custodian is going to get killed. There's also an argument here for just trying to, like hold up anticipate slash negate. It's nice that negate is the card that the opponent um, did not already see. Oh, I wonder, I wasn't passing to them, right? So they shouldn't have like marsh casualties. Okay, mummy paramount, sure. Okay, there we go. Um, so we can just attack for two and then prevent the two damage that would be dealt to the human tokens to get in one point of damage here. Yeah. Okay, just do this. And obviously if the opponent wants to hit me for two on the crackback, that's something I'm fine with. I almost just misclicked there, which would have been bad. But I think we're in good shape here overall. Four creatures to the opponent's one. We have a few good cards in hand. We get to pass next turn with both of these up. Just put Luris into hand, okay. Stasis field, yeah. Um, I 
think I want to main phase the anticipate. Question is, what kind of mana do I want to leave up? Uh, I don't actually have any double pipped twos or threes, so I don't think it matters. So we can just anticipate now. Oh, interesting. There's a Starlet Mantle, but also an Ojutai Summons. I think now that I already have the Negate, I don't need the Starlet Mantle. That said, I could use the Starlet Mantle to kill the opponent's 2-2, but I don't think I care a whole lot about that. So let's just take the... Um... Oh, and yeah, the opponent could maybe just recast that anyway. Yeah, let's just take the Summons here. Uh, any order, because I don't care. Play land... Do this again. Prevent damage here. Take my four, please. And so I guess the question now um, is like, would Ward Sliver have been better there than um, the mantle, though I feel like that's a pretty, I don't know, it's kind of a weird spot to think about that. Bronze Sword, I could just counter this, but then the opponent can just recast it with Luris, so I think that is allowed. And a Raptor Companion, okay, sure. I think at this point, I have to reread this guy. Each player mills, okay, good to know. Um, yeah, I think at this point we're just jamming some flyers out onto the table. I don't think there's a reason for me to um, attack with the 1-1s one anymore. I mean, it does sort of get through one damage, but I think at this point it's valuable enough to hold up the healer ability. Just try to hit the opponent for damage in the air. We're already setting up a two-turn clock here. We have five, five power in the air. We should be just about all set here if we're allowed to untap with a board like this. More motorcycles in the background. I have a feeling that's gonna be a common occurrence, but that's okay. <laughs> anyway, yeah, hope everybody is enjoying the stream so far. I am super psyched for chaos. I'm gonna see if we can get a good spot on the trophy leaderboard. Um, not gonna claim that uh, number one is gonna be possible or even likely for us when we're competing against the likes of Monsieur Verdu, possibly Amaz, who's you know in the chat. Um, Austin Marshall, okay. They have two mana up. We know they have like Luris and stuff, so presumably they have something here, some kind of interactive card or something like that. I mean, you know, clearly they're missing land drops too, but um, at this point, uh, I just want to hold up Negate. That's kind of priority number one. And then the question becomes like, like presumably they have removal here. Um, yeah, let's negate this and then now I mean, they might just scoop. Um, notably, the mantle would have done the same thing, but slightly better here. Um, and now the question is, do I want to play into a sweeper? Um, so they take a bunch of damage. What kind of sweepers could they realistically have? Um, I don't know. Let's just is really close i think we can pass maybe i'm really not sure i guess they can play one flying blocker this way which would let them live if we didn't have fate spetters i don't know yeah i'm not really sure what we were supposed to be thinking about in that spot because it seems like we're super far ahead but maybe it doesn't work out that way i don't know all right so is there anything that i can board in to kind of give myself an advantage. Um, I do actually think that the Snare Squad is gonna be coming back in because the opponent showed me Raptor Companion, which is a 3-1, but they also showed me just like a random 2-2. Two -two. It also blocks Luris technically, even though it doesn't do a great job of that. And in general, they just should have a bunch of cheap spells. I'm not sure about Negate versus Starlet Mantle. I think I wanna cut one of those. Um, I'll try cutting the negate, but pretty low confidence on that once again. 
Well, let's just give it a shot. This, uh, this hand is not great, but we're going to keep it. Just can't really afford to mulligan hands like this. Oh, so we might end up dying for our insolence. Okay, nice thing is we drew a three drop here. Uh, not nice thing is the opponent has a turn one, two, two, and okay, mountain. Oh, geez. Okay, so this is a very different kind of draw than we saw the first game. Well, I'm very glad I brought in my one four. Okay, Illyrios is going to be a beating unless something bad happens. I need them not to have like one more cheap creature here that just puts a ton of pressure on. But Illyrios into... What is this? Yeah, so if they have... Um... Well, let's see what happens here. Lurus into hand. Okay, that's good, but it's not the scariest. The reflection is a 3-2, so we're kind of looking to trade, but that's fine. It's possible that it was actually better to play Gomazoa, because then this bounces rather than allowing a trade. Um, and a trade when they have Lurus is maybe not something that's good for me. But we'll trade here with the one that... Um, you know, I'm not as worried about. Okay, if we just find, like, one more land, we should be in really good shape, I think. Okay, there's Lurus, and they recast the Diagraphical Wolf, sure. It's definitely obnoxious. Okay, but now we find the Thriving Ibex. We're really close to being stable here. Possible I wasn't supposed to trade for this. I was just kind of afraid of the short cutter ability. I don't know. Yeah, I think maybe that trade was pretty loose. Yeah. I don't know what they have going on here. Um, I, you know, I just have to block. So, hello. There we go. Kind of like, okay, they have that. Oh, but that was still pretty good for me, right? Because I don't care about a poison counter. They can replay their 2 1. Yeah, I think that was really good for me overall. Makes me feel better about probably having played the last turn incorrectly. <clears throat> Funny counter stuff going on here. And a mummy paramount, sure. Okay, I think at this point, so I could double spell, but I think I just want to play... But the problem is if I play Ojutai's summons or whatever, then it's just going to trade for one of these and they'll just replay it. So I think I actually do just want to double spell, but maybe I play the guide. Yeah, because these can just bounce and then the guide can actually start attacking. They might spend a removal on the guide. And if they're spending like an immolating glare on the guide, then maybe that means that... um the Knight Arbiter is going to be allowed to attack over and over. They're going to be running out of cards. Oh, they actually have that synergy. I didn't even think about that. But if they have no attacks here, then I'm super happy. Yeah, okay. So now I think we send the Aerial Guide. And then... If they want to just, like, chump attack to deal me two damage, then I'm happy with that. I don't want to trade off my Jin Monk, whatever guy, but I'm happy to put a... Um, do I want to bounce off here? I think I do. I'm not too scared of that ability. Opponent has three cards in hand. They play Mountain. They should be running out of gas. Interestingly, they didn't play a spell from hand last turn. <clears throat> So it could be something like Immolating Glare. Um, I'm not I'm really not sure. So wouldn't they have killed this? I don't know. Do they just send them? Okay, they're going for this, yeah. So we'll try to kill the most expensive ones. We also don't want to give them another Diagraph Ghoul trigger. Um, so maybe this turn for them looks like, 
us taking two damage. Maybe they recast the Paramount, and the next turn they recast the 2-1, prevent something from blocking. Let's see what they have left, though. Okay, we're not going to see what they have left, so I think we're just... I mean, unless they have something pretty good here, like, we should be in really good shape to win this one. Considering even attacking with the um, Ibex, but I don't think we're quite there. Maybe playing out that land was loose, in case they have, like, a Mind Rot. But we can now make a 4-4 four, four Apex Hawks if we draw a land. I don't even know if that's good. <laughs> We can give our Vigilant guy flying here. <clears throat> okay, Order of the Golden Cricket. I do like that card. But I think they're pretty dead because even if they go for the short cutter, prevent something from blocking, like, I don't know, look at our board. I think our board is pretty formidable at this point. So hopefully we'll be on to round two here after facing the Solaris, which is very cool, but also terrifying. Are they not playing short cutter? I wonder if they forgot about that. They should play short cutter here. I think. I can't really think of a reason for them not to. They have one card in hand. Sure. Okay. Oh, there's a Starlet Mantle. Well, that helps a lot, I think. At this point, we can just send in the clowns. Boom. Everything flies. And I think I'm happy to just play this Gomazoa holding up the mantle. We can threaten a bunch of damage next turn because we can also send in the Aeronaut, which they can't block, and we can send in a 3 5 Ibex. <laughs> it's looking good. If they have like, what would they need here? If they had like Divine Reckoning, choose Luris, <laughs> and I have Starlet Mantle and not Negate, then I would be super sad. Good news is I don't think that's very likely. Claim the Firstborn. I think I just give this Hexproof. I don't really know. There's the short cutter. Okay, and yeah, they're now dead on board. I mean, yeah, they can't even live if they gain three life with the Luris, so should be all set here. Yep. All right. Looks like the opponent's conceded. Send them the GGs, and we're on to round two. All right, we've got a leaderboard to try to get to the top of, or at least try to get onto. That would be nice too. Oh no. Uh, okay. I don't know if I, did I just like run too many things on my computer at once? I don't know what happened there. I don't know if my stream is still up, but now we got to reopen the client and hope we don't, uh... <laughs> oh no. What? Why am I installing? <sighs> okay, is this happening to anybody else? I have a feeling this is just happening to me. I might have to turn off the stream so I can actually get back into my match. Uh... <laughs> no. <laughs> Click one time to make sure that... Uh-oh. Made the mistake of trying to use the chat. I should have just kept the hand. Ooh. Yeah, we're going to be waiting here for a minute for this thing to send. That's okay. So this hand, we've got Illyrios. We've got three lands. If we draw three more lands with one island, um, then I'll be very happy. I don't want to tab around too much, but I will just take a look and see. Yeah, okay, it looks like we're still in kind of the first steps of being logged in here. That's why you always click the um, 
just like click some kind of button in game before you do anything else because you want to make sure that the thing the timer doesn't um, say oh no you were inactive for however long you're out of there okay try again opponent just had a snap keep sure All right, two drop into running lands. Nope. Okay, land is still good though. I think it's supposed to be island before planes. Okay, that one is annoying because it does have first strike. Blazing torch is pretty nice. Let's see what the opponent is up to here kill my own reflection token to untap Illyrios. What a line. Definitely take our two here. <clears throat> Three mana, and they played that one. Okay. Hmm, the Ibex now. Interesting, so we're already given a tough kind of decision point. Um... <clears throat> So we can just play the Ibex, which blocks this. I can attack for three. I'm not blocking with this if I do that. Um, I can also just use the Blazing Torch, but I don't think I want to do that. Oh, interesting that this is a zombie too for the Blazing Torch. Um, I think I just want to take two from the Invader. We're going to attack for three. And then next turn we can use the Torch to finish off the Invader or even just prevent the opponent from attacking by equipping the Ibex going to blocks, and then if they sack something, then of course that's pretty darn bad for them. I'm really glad we got, uh, we got back into the client though. It's definitely good news for us. Opponents on three mountains, unclear whether they're missing a color, like presumably they're not mono red, but you never know. There's chaos, people can do what they please. Land would be good, it does unlock the Knight Arbiter. Um, gets us closer to that Sphinx, which presumably is going to be very tough for them to beat. Okay, they play Mountain number four, and now I'm starting to think that, um, yeah, they are not, um, not playing another color. <clears throat> Interesting thing about this is I don't actually think I'm supposed to wait to try to use the run aground. So let's say they attack with both here, and they have either like a shock or a combat trick. So I could choose not to block with the idea that, oh, well, next turn I can just have run aground slash blazing torch. So then if they make the same play, then I can punish um, whatever their follow-up is, like the interactive card or whatever. Okay, they go for this. This is the attack that I was prepared for, though, so I will just take the two damage. Now this is a little bit annoying because the reflection token can't attack. Yeah, this reflection token is kind of getting bodied. Oh, wait. Oh, okay. So if we end up in a spot where this one is back instead of this one, we can still use that Blazing Torch to give evasion. This is an additional cost card. What would they be doing here for two mana plus an additional cost? Tormenting Voice? Cathartic Reunion? Okay, there's the Cathartic Reunion. Ancient Ziggurat. Okay and red cap heal slasher. So you don't play Ancient Ziggurat if you're mono red, yet it kind of looks like this opponent is. Faith's Fetters, interesting. Um, so we could just take the most aggressive line here. We could take the line of Faith's Fetters, the two one first strike and attack for six, which is probably a bad idea <laughs> because we are playing against Hey Sean, great to see you. Yeah, I would say um, things are going well for me so far, hard to have a rough day when chaos is up and happening. Um, the nice thing about this is it does bring us up to 20 and it hits the opponent down to 11. Obviously the worst part about this is the opponent is mono red. <laughs> um, but I think it's a good enough line that I'm just gonna go for it. If the opponent wants to sack the Zada's Commando to the Oncrop Crasher, then that's fine. But let's just get our damage in while we can. If the opponent wants to trade the Reflection Token for the Lamholt Harrier, I think that's pretty good for me. If I had a land drop, I would probably try to play this slower, um, but I don't have a land drop, which means 
kind of have to work with what I have. Interesting. I wonder what they were clicking on there. Oh, I wonder. Oh, I bet you they clicked this. I bet they're trying to trade here. Yeah, okay, that's very good for me because now my Illyrios is a two for one. Love to see that. Opponent can definitely get in two more damage here by sacking the Zada's Commando, but overall I'm not concerned about that. I have a 3 5 versus a red deck, red X. I don't know what that is about. Opponent's using all their mana, or at least they're saving the commando. Frontline Devastator now, okay. Hmm, so this is another zombie. Um, I think I just want to use the run aground this turn. Hit the opponent for five. I don't think negate is very good in this matchup. It's not that negate is like bad exactly, I just don't think I have time for it. Okay, they replay that. Not a big surprise, but we just were pretty far ahead in the race at this point, which is the good news. Now we have Anticipate. We can go Anticipate into Blazing Torch and still use the Blazing Torch. Oh, we can also just try to kill the opponent, which is always a good line. So we can go Blazing Torch on the Illyrios and then crack in for five points of evasive damage. I think I want to start here with the Anticipate. Okay, we could find Aerial Guide, we could find Gather the Townsfolk, or we could just take land. <clears throat> um, do I want Gather the Townsfolk? I don't think so. I think I... Hmm. Maybe I do, though? I think this game is all about racing. I think I'm just trying to kill my opponent. So... The question is, maybe Aerial Guide is best? No, I don't think that makes sense. I don't think I'm going to do anything great with this. I think multiple blockers is actually the best way to go. So I will take the Gather the Townsfolk. There's even a chance we could get to um, Fateful Hour. And this one is a little more dubious, but remember the opponent does have a zombie here, so... You know, assuming I can read this, uh, they can't block. They can chomp. Yeah, I mean, that's not crazy, Sean. It might have been better. I wasn't looking at chat for that one. Um, but, like, now one of the nice things is the opponent goes to four and they actually can't take a hit from Thriving Ibex anymore. Um, and they can't leave just a zombie back either. And we have negate. So basically next turn, like they need a removal here. Yeah, I think this was best. And that negate might be better than I anticipated it would be. I think in this matchup, the debtor's knell has got to go though. Okay, they have Okay, so just a 3-3 three, three haste. Oh, and they leave everything back. Okay, so now we can force a chump, right? I think I can force a chump because... Oh, wait. Oh, no, no, no. Because they can sack a goblin, and they have this goblin here. That sucks. Hmm, that is a big problem. That is a huge problem. That's so annoying. <laughs> um, I think it's just Sanctum Custodian. And then I can just make the play anyway next turn. Wow, that click slither. <laughs> Why do they have Ancient Ziggurat in their deck? I wonder if they have a creature. I wonder if they're mono red with like some kind of creature that cares about mana of other colors. If we untap with the Sanctum Custodian, I'm very happy with our spot. It's kind of weird, like maybe the aerial guide, if we had taken that over the Gather of the Townsfolk, like we could have played it this turn, and then that just threatens to kill them. 
We need to take the damage from Frontline Devastator, which sucks. The good news is we can safely, pretty safely block the on crop crasher. I mean, maybe, I don't know. Maybe we can't. We're up to 16 though, but they're mono red. I don't know. I mean, the last the last opponent was Luris. Like, okay, if they do this, I have to. How do I block here though? I could double block. What are they doing though? Yeah, the knight would have been good. Um. No, I think that I need to do this. And then if they have a burn spell, like sure, they can kill the Illyrios, but I think that's fine. Okay. And now we'll just sack this. As long as they don't have like a run amok here, yeah. So now the Click Slither can't block though. Okay. Obviously, we don't have the Blazing Torch anymore. Oh, okay. That is annoying, but it's not that bad, I don't think. Land? Okay. So now, yeah, we should be all set with this Knight. And just pass. How does the damage here work so they can triple pump? Yeah, so they can triple pump, but we can still save this. Yeah, we're just going to block. Double block too, why not? I don't think I thought about whether Afflict stacks. Yeah, that was not ideal for the opponent. Now I don't think we can lose. I think they didn't want to make that attack last turn either. I think... Yeah, I don't know. That was an interesting one. I'm not sure how I was supposed to play that one versus how I did, but... I know we want to make some changes here in sideboarding. We want to bring in this 1-4. We might honestly want this one mana zero for. What is this good against though? I mean, it blocks Zada's commando and stuff. I, I do think we're supposed to put some of this chaff into our deck, take out the seven drop, and then maybe we can take out like a negate. Sure. I don't know. Actually, oh no, Ward Sliver is insane here, right? Ward Sliver is very good. Oh yeah, <laughs> you just said that too, Sean. That's really funny. <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't even notice. Um, I think since I'm going to be on the back foot, I don't plan on hold being able to hold up mana for Starlit Mantle. Maybe that's wrong. I don't know. We'll just run this. That was an interesting game. Okay. This hand is not amazing, but it is fine. And my stomach's already grumbling. It's gonna be time for me to grab some food soon. All right, opponent mulligans. I still don't know why they have Ancient Ziggurat in their deck because last game they showed me Spire Barrage, which deals damage equal to the number of mountains you control. So I feel like that's a pretty good reason to just have mountains in your mono red deck, but. I don't know, maybe I'm missing something. No two drop, please. Okay, I'd like to see that. Um, I 
don't think I care very much about like I'd rather I'd rather the opponent play the um first striker here and I would actually be able to attack into that like the oh whoa black mana interesting fire juggler so I could just use this to kill their thing uh becomes blocked okay so yeah we can just try to race I don't know I think I like doing this just because it's like a guaranteed kill on their guy um why do they have black mana on their deck they should just snap off a block here right and then just do this just make sure i'm reading this thing correctly yeah okay so we're gonna mill two cards that's fine aerial guide tranquil cove they milled spire barrage which is not a card i wanted to play against in a mountain Oh, what could they have for like one one black pip in their deck? That would be really good. I mean, if they have any kind of terror here for the ward sliver, that'll make me sad. Oh, Sanit, okay. Sanit is scary. We just have to play this. Attack Samet. Samet has kind of a lot of loyalty too, because I think this is, yeah, it's a minus one. But we might be able to kill Samet. We also have Ward Sliver into Jwar Jwar Sphinx here, barring, you know, something. <laughs> so I'm feeling good about this overall. Okay, there's that one. They can now give it plus two, plus one in haste, but the good news is... Oh wait, oh no, no, it just has haste. Interesting. Okay. Um, well, we definitely wanna play Ward Sliver this turn. I guess technically I could use this thing's ability, detain this and hit that, but that doesn't make sense to me. Um, I think I do want to keep this thing on the board, and yeah, so I guess it's just a ward sliver. And just hope the opponent, well, yeah, I don't know. I don't think I'm really too afraid of a sliver here. But yeah, just pass the turn and then hope they scoop to this thing, basically. Sure. You can, you can like plus two plus one this one. Triple block. Yep. I wonder if they have some kind of interaction for one black. Yeah, I don't know. We'll do this, we'll lose our two, and then we'll lose our humans, kind of regardless of what happens. If they just have, they could have like a disfigure. Wait, what was that, disembowel? Okay, that's fine. Wait, wouldn't, wouldn't you wanna save the disembowel? I don't know, I'm a little confused. Okay, so now, um, I can just kill this. I can just play Thriving Ibex have this thing give itself flying, kill the Samet. How badly do I want to kill the Samet? It's like a little bit annoying. This also has a lot of toughness and blocks here. I think it's okay to do this. This might not be the best line. Play Mountain, they have one card in hand. We have Ward Sliver, which is just absolutely ridiculous. I 
I wonder if Ward Sliver has now earned a slot in the main deck after this. I don't know. I feel like it's so much better in this matchup than it should be pretty much anywhere else because the opponent has like no evasion and they have all like red creatures on the ground. I mean, I guess that was redundant, but. So they go for this. Definitely blocking here. Questions do we want to put the Ibex in front of it? Basically, trades. Um, I think we don't need to. I think we just kind of lose our two life. There's the click slither again. No goblins this time. This time we're gonna jam the Sphinx. We can make a 3-5 first, which seems good. Opponent can double block, but we have a bunch of mana up. I don't know, maybe they don't want to double block. Also, if the mono red deck is double blocking, then I think we're in good shape. They are going for it, okay, sure. Just do this. Play this one, and I imagine that's game over. Ooh, Wall of Runes. <laughs> Block. Next turn we get to Triple Spell. Seems good. Go ahead and attack for five. All I have to do here is make sure I don't randomly die. I don't think I'm going to play around any sweepers or anything. Blue. Storm count three, pass. All right. And we got there. So onto the finals. Has anybody beaten us? Not yet. Okay, 2040. Okay, we're paired against a 1-0. All right, we're gonna keep this one. It's not spectacular, but it's good enough. Might just be using Anticipate to find Island here. I love that, um, okay, never mind. <laughs> okay, opponent's mulliganing. definitely know this player's name. I don't know how good this player is, but I think they are a grinder. Okay, island, go. I'd love to find two drop off the top into land, which I'm pretty sure I've said before with this deck. Uh, land is okay. Plains is not ideal. Now I'm much more likely to anticipate for a spell if possible. What do they have here for, oh, Castigate? Uh, sure. If they want to take my Ojutai Summons or whatever, that's fine. If they want to take my Aerial Guide, like, the, the worst part about this, once again, is just the opponent knowing um, that the Sea Kite is on its way. This thing being face up makes it so much worse, especially in Chaos, where, like, you know, realistically, people shouldn't be playing around 4 mana, 2, 3, Flash Flying, even though there are, like, at least two or three of those. Uh, takes the, uh, what was it? They took the aerial guide. Okay, sure. That I don't think is particularly powerful. Blazing torch. I think I'm more interested in that. Well, hmm. Yeah, I think the blazing torch is the best effect for me here. I'll just any order that again. There's the custodian. Perfect. And we can just find one island and then our curve out is complete. <laughs> There's that island. Um, I think I might as well attack with the Sanctum Custodian. It's a very cheeky, well, yeah, let's just do it. Sometimes you just gotta do it. Get in there for one. Yeah, this is looking good. Lunark Veteran, you got it. Okay. Now I wonder if they have 
I mean, if they have, like, deal three damage, gain three life, I'm going to feel really silly for tapping out of... Uh, but I guess even then... Ooh, okay. Wow. We have perfect mana. Love it. <clears throat> At this point, I'm not going to attack with my um, <laughs> Sanctum Custodian. I don't think that would be reasonable. But now... I mean, there are no creature cards in the graveyard. And this creature is not very likely to end up there for very long. But we do have double blue, triple white, and that means that uh, we might be doing it. We also might not be doing it. It's kind of unclear. Loxodon Restorer, okay. Sure. So we can now block with the Sanctum Custodian, which is maybe not the wisest choice. I guess, no, it's just better to block with a monk. Um, where am I supposed to put the Blazing Torch, is the question. I do think I'm supposed to hit for four. <laughs> I don't know. Mm, no, I need to put it somewhere else. Put it on this one. So my reasoning there is we're going to be tapping this one anyway. If something weird happens in combat, this one could die. Um, and if I'm tapping out like for seven mana, then I just, okay, they're going to gain a bunch of life, whatever. Sure, they go for this. We are just going to do this. Wow, so we just get to slam it here. I'm pretty sure the play now is attack for four. I guess maybe I could have played Debtor's Null pre-combat, but I think, yeah, it's just attack for four. Play this. And now we can steal the opponent's Loxodon Restorer if we want to. If they attack with it, that is. Sure, that's reasonable. Just going to use a blood. Careful not to rummage away a creature. Okay, but looks like it's a land. We could even kill this here, but I don't think we have any reason to do that. I'm just going to pass. <laughs> Island doesn't accomplish anything for us, but I mean, currently that doesn't matter. Make this play again. The extremely rare debtor's knell that does nothing. <laughs> They could have some kind of exile effect. They are black-white after all. Don't want to get too... Oh, shoot. <laughs> now I'm dead. <laughs> all right. GG. Yeah, that's going to do it. They hit that one, though. Sure. I guess I have, like, Sphinx of Dwar Isle. Just super dead here, though. Yeah, this attack just doesn't do anything. Because even if they have a card here that kills this, then just get my guy back. Okay. God, yeah. Admonition Angel, huh? Not sure what all I can do about that. I don't even have 
yeah, there's just nothing I can do. <laughs> I'm just cold to that card. Hmm. Well, I'm not just going to scoop, that's for sure. What do I want to equip here? Let's equip the sea kite. Oh, no, never mind. Okay. I was like, maybe I should have attacked, but I mean, six power is a lot more than two. Yeah, this thing is messed up. I thought we got the best rare uh, in the Jwar Isle Sphinx, and we got Debtor's Null, which is very powerful, but like, how do I ever beat Admonition Angel? Yeah, they just get the Jin monks out of there, and then. Eh, might be pretty dead. They have a divination here, which is almost guaranteed to hit them. A land drop for next turn. Torment of Scarabs, okay. Uh, wait, is this target? Hmm, that's annoying. <laughs> yeah, we're getting kind of ground into the dirt here. Um, I think I'm just supposed to sack the sea kite and we're just going to get it back next turn anyway. Active player, non-active player. So their trigger is always going to go first. I don't know. I'm pretty sure I'm dead. You just like click random stuff. Serum Raker. Okay. I don't think this game's going to time or anything, but if nothing else, I get more information from the opponent's deck. They missed their puzzle knot crack there. Okay, this gets exiled. Prevent two damage here. <clears throat> it's gonna be a long one. Okay, now they crack their puzzle knot. And you're supposed to crack your puzzle knot before you cast your four mana card for the record. So two chances to have cracked it earlier. Block the one that I can block. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how we beat this angel. We just don't have anything that does it, I think. Mm, sure. <laughs> that is actually a really good start to beating the angel. Um, sure. Oh, and then this mills each player. So that was actually really good. Nice. Well, that's something. Do they just have another land? Looks like this time they have spells. Defiler of Flesh, okay. Sure. <laughs> and they have a land, okay. I mean, the land, I don't know, that's one of the things about landfall cards, right? Um, do I want to do anything with the torch? I don't think so. So this just happens. This has to be one of my better draws in this spot. So I don't just die or anything. I go for this. We're going to get rid of some power over there. And then we both mill two. I mill nothing, they mill Razor Golem. So I can get a three, four Vigilance here. Um, I think I need to take the damage. Oh, wait. But now I'm losing three life. I don't know if I thought that through. Sure. This 
This is a weird game. Pretty sure I should be dead now. That island is not going to cut it. I can at least discard that one. I can double block the defiler. I might just die if I do that though. Oh, this <laughs> this got a power back. This went from negative one to zero. That's really funny. God, and they have that. Yeah, I don't think I can beat this now. I mean, I couldn't beat it before, but now I think I'm just actually dead. Because I can block three damage here, four, five, six. Yeah, I'm actually just dead. All right. I mean, I can sack the torch, but let's be real. Let's be real about that one. Yeah, it is a mega bomb. That's okay, though. We put up a fight, which is more than I expected to say. Can maybe bring in Ward Sliver on white? <clears throat> Question is, do I have any outs to that guy? I don't think Ward Sliver is bad here. I don't think Vacuum Melt's going to cut it. <clears throat> I think I'd rather have Negate than Mantle in this matchup. Yeah, I think I just need to hope to curve out and just not have that happen. That has to be like one of the worst debtors knells of all time, but that's okay. I don't really anticipate winning this match. If we're lucky, I think we can steal a game, especially game two, because we'll be on the play. But <clears throat> don't like my chances very much. That is a clunker, huh? I think this might be a mulligan. Like, with the planes, this is a totally reasonable hand, but we just don't have a planes. <laughs> okay. This one is not the worst. Keep this, throw back the Serum Raker. If we find an island, we can play Illyrios. <clears throat> Okay, two drop isn't too bad. Still love to find island for Illyrios, but the good news is, you know, this hand can actually cast spells. Castigate? No, Signet, okay. Island. Okay, well, we need to get in damage while we can. They have the defiler here. There it is. Hmm, another planes, huh? Well, at this point we can trade um, <clears throat> one damage for one here by sending both flyers. Don't think we want to do that, so we'll just send the one. And then we might have to ward sliver on black if we can find land. But I'm pretty sure we're dead here. Like, this is just not a good curve for this deck. We have a double blue card even though we put one back. And I'm pretty sure it was still a mulligan. Pretty sure that first hand was worse. So, a little bit sad. Oh, and they're casting a black spell now. Okay, what's this one? Mill three? Sure. Okay, I mean, in general, milling three is good for debtor's knell, but... Feeling not very alive here. <laughs> Three islands, I love it. That's really funny. What is this? Oh, foil death to the death or debt to the deathless. Lots of deaths in this one. Take my five. Yeah, no, I mean, there's not a whole lot I can do about this. If I draw my land for the ward sliver, then oh, did not draw my land. Still gotta play this, I think. How big is this? This is a 3-3, so I can just triple block. Send this in again. I would be really shocked if we had a chance in this one. Well, it's triple white, thanks to that Signet. So they could just have the, um, whatever that guy is again, 6-6 six, six flyer that exiles my board. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, they, whoa, they milled that. I didn't even notice. That's really cool, actually. I got to hand that to them. That was pretty cool. Does this give menace? It does. Oh, God. Oh, we're just dead. <laughs> Help, get me out of here. All right. So the opponent hits me for just a ton of damage. Maybe I should have left this back so I could try to block the 4-4. But I don't know. I, I'll just take my 9. <laughs> like, this, this one's already over. There's not much I can do at this point. Okay. There's the island. Too little too late, I think, because now they can just give the 4-4 flying and menace, and then I have no good blocks. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think it's pretty safe to scoop this one up. Sad, but that's how it goes. Uh, if they did that, then I just throw a 1-1 one -one, uh, in front of the unearth guy and effectively gain 5 life. All right, still nobody on the trophy leaderboard, maybe? Let's find out. They still have the thing hidden down there. All right, let's hop in, see how long this queue's going to take. Oh, we're at 7 out of 8. Never mind. We'll be hopping right back in then. 